Good morning. It's 11.15. People are still coming in, but we'll just uh, start anyway. Good morning. I would like to introduce the latecomers uh, personally. So, Francesco, great to, be, great to see you here. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, I'm going to talk a bit about our migration, for Rabobank's migration uh, from a monolith to a microservices platform. Uh, the way, the, and the way we did that. B before I go into that, I do need to tell you a bit about Rabobank, I guess. Uh, I see the first few rows in the Netherlands. You see the, the orange shirts, they're all Dutch, so they, they know Rabobank. But actually, when you come outside of the Netherlands, Rabobank isn't that well known. So uh, to give you a bit of insight on that, uh, Rabobank is actually uh, uh, the, one, of the, of the, one of the biggest banks in the world for uh, food and agri, but we have our roots in the Netherlands. So we, we are active in 39 countries with uh, 1.2 million customers worldwide, except for the Netherlands. And in the Netherlands alone, we have 7 million people. Well, we're here in Europe. Um, so you all know where the Netherlands are. Uh, two weeks ago, I was in the US where I had to present this. And I, and I had to add this to show you exactly people, dear Americans, the Netherlands is over there. And we have like 17 million people in there. In the Netherlands, we're uh, one of the top three banks, uh, you know, a full service bank. So we, so we do everything. Um, uh, a bank can do. Um, so with that said, Rabobank is over 100 years old. I think yesterday Abby told uh, on the stage that she left her bank and went to an online bank because everything was, was an online thing. Well, of course, as a bank, that's also what we want to do. Even though we're 100 years old, we are working on lots of digital stuff to make it more and more digital. And here are some examples of what we did. I don't think it's going, yeah, it went automatic. So um, in 1996, uh, we were actually the first Dutch bank to have an internet banking website, followed by a mobile banking website on WAP. You, you know that with this old, old, the old phones. Um, well, I'm not going to go through all of this, but you see here that we've been always been active in the digital space. And just last month, uh, we opened up our developer portal for developers to build their own apps on top of our APIs. If you go there today or to developer.rabank.nl, you won't see a lot of a APIs yet, but uh, the beginning is there, right? So we're starting to, to do that. And also last month or the month before, we were launching partner of Google uh, with their uh, Dutch version of the assistant in the Netherlands. So you see that we are, as any other bank will, will do, as any old bank, we're trying to be uh, fully digital and doing that more and more. Um, the focus of today is the Dutch part of uh, Rabobank. That's where I work. So I'm responsible for the architecture of our online sites. That's the public website, but it's also the uh, internet banking website and also our apps. And they all run on the same uh, platform server side, um, which I'm going to explain a bit and then tell you uh, how and why we migrated away. Um, our platform was built around 10 years ago, and it was like the, the traditional application stack. You could see it basically any bank, at least in the Netherlands. It's uh, Java-based, WebSphere-based. And we built our, our own uh, top of, uh, stuff on top of that. What we did do differently than already then uh, was that we went for things called portlets. Anybody still remember portlets? I can also uh, guess that you don't even want to point or hold up your hand if you do. Um, what we did, we built our own uh, framework. Uh, so we didn't buy anything. We built it our, ourselves. It was our portal framework. And, and uh, what it did is all incoming requests go through that framework, and they pass on the request to any apps uh, on the same server. So this allowed us, for example, to have multiple portlets, multiple apps on the same page for the user, all server-side rendered. So this is all the, the traditional server-side rendering uh, of stuff. Um, and actually, this worked pretty well. We, we set it up in a way that we could scale it out easily, uh, almost linearly. So if the, if the load goes up, we just add a couple of boxes, and it will, uh, it will work fine. I have some words on that as well. Um, um, uh, we, we, we have groups of deployment units where we, where we group our apps together on a single box. And when I say apps, I really mean small things. So they used to be portlets. Now with our more traditional, more modern uh, development, we do single page apps where we have front, rich front end and we just call services that expose JSON data basically. Um, these apps are things like making a payment or um, uh, uh, getting a loan or uh, getting your list of transactions. Those are all separate apps already. So we already did this 10 years ago. You could even say that we were already doing microservices then. The only real big difference is that they all ran on the same box. So, and of course, with microservices, you stick your, your microservice, each microservice in its own process, which is something we couldn't do then. The technology wasn't, wasn't available. So in our own framework, we build a lot of additional stuff, mostly about non-functional requirements. So we do a lot of security checks in there. Uh, we do a lot of monitoring and throttling in there that we, that we can uh, leverage the, the, the system as, as best as possible. Um, 
and that's, uh, that's worked out pretty well, actually. So we've been doing this for 10 years. Uh, today, there are still over 400 applications on that platform uh, running. Most of your, uh, if you go to our public website, you hit, this, uh, you hit this system. If you go to our app, if you go to our internet banking websites, you all hit the, these systems. Uh, so over 400 apps, it does, easily does uh, over 2,000 transactions per second. We have uh, 2 million logons every day. And in those 10 years, hardly any disturbances. So it's actually been a pretty good uh, platform for us. Still, we decided uh, a while back that it was time to move on, and there were three reasons for doing that. The first reason is that our technology was getting old, right? It was WebSphere, it's Java AE, although we don't do portlets anymore, and it's uh, uh, web services, more or JSON services, it's still the WebSphere box that we run on. If you go to conferences these days, you hear about uh, the Spring Boot apps, or the Node apps, or anything other than basically uh, traditional app server stuff, and we simply couldn't do that. Our, our, our stack doesn't support that. Another reason uh, to, to move on is that actually with 400 apps on our platform, it was getting a bit full. Uh, we, we reached the limits of our scalability. We couldn't add many more apps. We can add boxes, but then our load balancing is really tricky. So it started to, yeah, it started to creak a bit. It started to get, uh, get difficult to manage. So it was time to, to look forward. And the third reason, also very important, actually maybe the, even the most important, is that we uh, have been doing agile development within the Rabobank for, I think, over 10 years now. Uh, and a couple of years ago, we've been switching that to DevOps. Uh, so where you move, where the, the operations part of the teams really becomes part of the Agile team. Uh, and that means, basically, if you say to your teams that when you build it, you also run it, you cannot do that with a consolidated environment. You cannot say to a team, you own that stuff, and by the way, somebody else can also break it. That simply doesn't work. So you need to go to a system where you can really break it out and give each team its own responsibility. Uh, so you need to go the full microservices uh, route, basically. So that's what we did. We uh, started on the journey. And uh, it's being depicted here. And a couple of things I, I'd like to say about that. So one of the things you see here is that we started this late 2015. That's over two and a half years ago, or even three. What is it? A long time ago. So it's a, that, that's a frustrating thing. Like, so we, are now, we now have something in place. We're very happy that we're there, but it took us a long time. Um, last year, I was also here, and I was as a, um, a, a spectator, as an attendee, like, like many of you. And then we said, either I'm back here again this year and talk about how we did this, or we're not coming back at all. So the reason that I'm here is, is, is OK, right? So, so we succeeded. Um, some other things to note is um, uh, late 20, 2015, when we, do that, we, when we did our research, uh, Kubernetes didn't exist yet. So you might wonder why is Kubernetes not on the slides. Uh, well, back then it wasn't there. So there was Docker. You could do Mesos Marathon. And we actually built our own platform uh, using that, open source uh, technologies. Uh, but no Kubernetes yet. After we built our own platform, we fairly soon decided that this was not the thing for us to do. Uh, we saw that uh, running a platform, actually, this is still running today at another department. The, uh, it, it's, it's nice if you have a couple of developers and if you have a couple of teams and a couple of apps, then it's nice. But it, to scale it out to the Rabobank, to, to have uh, over 100 or maybe 300 teams working on it, that's, that's something we would not be able to do with this, except if we put a lot of people on it. So we would be having to build a platform with maybe 60, 70 people. And that's simply not worth it, right? We're a bank. We're not about building platforms. We're not about containers. Uh, if you want to do that, you go to Rotterdam, where they have shipping. Uh, we're a bank, so we want, to, we want to offer banking services to our customers. So in, in there, in somewhere beginning of 2016, we came to the conclusion, actually, for us, it's much better to go out into the market and see what's there and just get a, a platform as a service in. Um, well, we, we pretty soon we, we ran into Cloud Foundry, and we really like that also with the fact that there are multiple implementations of there. Just today um, and yesterday we heard there are eight certified um, vendors now, so that, that's great. That, that gives you choice and it gives you exit strategies, and so that, that, that's nice. Um, and then we did a POC. It's also no, n nice to mention uh, we did the POC with two, uh, two parties. So we selected Pivotal as, a, as one of the parties because they're basically, the, yeah, as, as we see it, the biggest driver behind a lot of uh, Cloud Foundry stuff. Also, they own the whole Spring stack, uh, which we've been doing uh, for a long time already, Spring-related work. And we also did it with IBM, with Bluemix, uh, for the simple reason that IBM is our strategic partner. So we cannot not do it with them, right? So it's, uh, <laughs> 
Easy one. So we did it. Uh, we did a POC with both of them, and what we did differently is that what you normally see is that what you normally see is that uh, Pivotal or IBM or some other vendor they come in, they bring their consultants, they do their coding, and they show you how great their platform is. But we said, well, it's it's going to be our platform. It's going to be a developer platform. So developer experience is a very important thing. So we're, g we're going to give you a couple of days to teach our developers how to run this platform, how to how to build your apps, and then we're going to do the POC ourselves. So you can give us architectural advice. If you see one of our uh, big advisors sitting in the back of the room, I never. Uh, so that helped a lot, but actually, in the end, our own teams did the building and did the, did the tryouts and, and did the selection. Well, then you see a big gap. After we selected, it, uh, it took us over a year um, to actually select it and implement it and basically buy it and all that stuff. And why that is, is on a sub-note on this slide. Uh, we selected Pivotal Cloud Foundry as, for the bank. And where, when we started, we said we were going to use this as a replacement of our online platform architecture. But basically where we are now is that we say this is the platform for the whole of the bank. So any, any team within the bank, even if you're not doing any online stuff, if you, if you build your apps, stick them on PCF. And the reason it took a year is the side note, is that we put it on the cloud. Uh, we also have our own data centers, uh, but for this we see it as a strategic goal to move more and more into public cloud, and that's uh, easier said than done, especially if you're a bank and you have the Dutch uh, government and European guidelines and, and all that stuff. So that, that took us a, a long while. Um, why did we pick PCF? Well, one of the reasons, um, you've seen this sort of these slides many times already, the last couple of days. Actually, I claim them. I think I, I made them internally in 2014 or so, or 2015. And uh, after that, everybody was, was showing the four abstractions. Um, well, I'm kidding, of course, they're not mine. Um, but basically, this is what you can do. And what, what I've seen in the past or in, in the last few years in the market is that we uh, as, as, as techies, we come from the right and we move up to the left and we think that's really cool. So we've been doing VMs for a while, we've done Ansible scripting and Puppet and Chef and all that stuff. And then we learned containers and then we plugged Kubernetes in and it was all awesome and everybody's happy. Uh, actually, when you look at it from an architectural perspective, you should look at it the other way around. As from an architectural perspective, when you go to your teams, you want to build your features, your services at the highest abstraction level possible. So what we actually say is when you want to build something, you should first see if you could do it with functions, serverless, and then probably you find out that nine times out of 10 or 99 times out of 100, it's not possible yet. It might be at some point. So then you drop one notch and then you should go to apps. So where you see that the market is going from the right to the left, we try to go from the left to the right. And so we did a, basically a survey amongst all of our teams, amongst the, the 300 DevOps teams that are working in the Rabobank. And what we, what we found that is, is that 84.962% of the teams, and I hope you understand this is a bogus number, uh, that they uh, operate on that level. When, when we look at the DevOps teams within Rabobank, their goal is to build apps, to build features not to manage Kubernetes clusters or to, to do other stuff with containers. That's what they should be doing. Building software is already very, very hard. Thinking of all the non-functional requirements and your security requirements, especially when you're online. Think about your performance uh, requirements. And there, then there's this thing like, how do you call it, business requirements. You also have to implement those. So it's already very, very complicated. So make it as easy as possible for the developer. That's, that's basically what we found out. So that's why we uh, decided to go for apps. Of course, all the other three are also necessary, so we can't do it with PCF alone. You also need all the other stuff, but the majority of the teams are more than happy with, with just doing PCF, just pushing apps. Uh, so what we promise our teams today is a very simple model. Well, I, I probably don't need to explain it, otherwise, if I would, you, you shouldn't be here, I guess. It's uh, pushing apps and it's scaling them, and the whole platform takes care of sticking them in containers, running them, exposing them. You don't, you don't see load balance anymore, you don't see VMs, you don't see all the hard stuff that, that teams used to do. It's a very simple API and you push your apps. So that's great. So we selected this, we promised this, uh, but now what? So we have this uh, platform I showed you earlier which is uh, with Linux and WebSphere boxes and, uh, and, and, and our own frameworks and lots of apps in there. Now what? So we have PCF as, a, as the platform to go to. We still need to think about how do we do that. So what we did is we went into a, a nice technical track where we looked at uh, first at all the features that our portal framework had and we broke them up in, uh, into separate pieces in separate microservices or we said, well, this feature we don't need anymore. We can just throw it away. 
for example, the throttling and monitoring in there, that's something we won't need if the platform provides us for us, so we don't need to rebuild that. So what we basically did is uh, went into a nice track, which I try to depict here, is, um, is that we came up with things like the URL security uh, microservices, where you can have all kinds of security add-ons for, for uh, making safe URLs. We have a temporary service where you can store your user preferences. It, ideally, apps do that themselves of course, and, and have their own database. But we, we need to offer a migration path away from the old platform. So we need to mimic a lot of the APIs that are there, except where, well, before they all ran into the same uh, JVM, they ran in the same JVM, we now have to support them uh, as separate microservices. So we started breaking out these services. We've been putting a lot of effort into building these uh, dark blue blocks to allow other teams to move their apps on, on top of uh, on top of the online platform. So this is the new version of it, and it all runs on uh, PCF. What we see is that the technology is, uh, is great. What we see is that the developers in, in Rabobank, they go to conferences, and they learn stuff that they, uh, that they hear about Spring Boot or other libraries, or maybe Node or some other stuff. They come into the office, and they, they can actually apply that. Uh, before, it was WebSphere, and then you learned about something like Spring Boot, but you know, it's nice to learn, but you can't really use it. Now, now we're actually on par again with what's happening in the market. So that's great. Uh, developers really like that they learn what they learn today, they can apply today. And that, that, that's really great. Um, it's also very complex. Uh, we knew this up front. Building a distributed uh, network of distributed system is one of the most complex things you can do. Um, so you need to be really aware of all the stuff, all the timeouts, all the circuit breakers, all the fallbacks, and all, the, all those kinds of scenarios. You really need to think them through. Um, so I cannot, I cannot say enough about this book. You probably know it, probably heard about it. It's the Release It book from uh, Michael Nygaard. And um, oh, it's, it's just, I have no, no affiliation with the guy whatsoever. I'm just going to say, if, you want, if you're doing microservices, go read this book. It's written from an ops perspective and all the stuff that can go wrong if you, if you build microservices and how to, how to, um, how to solve that. Uh, the same, so so this, is, this is good. Uh, this is nice. Our, our teams are happy. Um, and they've been through a big learning curve to get, all, uh, get, get here. But it's also just half of the story. Uh, that everybody loves the technology part, but actually the, the most uh, difficult thing within Rabobank is the people. Uh, as many enterprise organizations, we are organized in, in, in structure like this, so this, this suggests a hierarchy. We have domains, we have departments, and we have teams in there. And what you can expect is in a, such a big organization, Conway's law applies, right? So you see that uh, the way of working is different, uh, the technology stacks are different, the, the maturity of the teams is different. So, for example, we've been saying that we've been doing DevOps for five years. Uh, there are teams who really embrace that and do that. There are also teams who actually do it in name only and uh, really don't have ops in the team at all or work on a consolidated platform still and stuff. So that, that's, that everybody is going, in their own, uh, going through their own speed in getting really to, towards DevOps with all the problems they have in their departments and in, in their teams. So that's, that's difficult. Um, myself, I'm uh, somewhere at the right, or on the left for you, uh, within the online department. And what, of course, you see there is that the teams within online, well, we, we said first we're going to replace our online platform. Uh, so all the teams are going to get training. All the teams are going through that. All the teams are, are actively working on uh, microservices these days and doing Spring Boot. Maybe not all of the teams, but a lot of them. So there's, that, that, that's easy. And also in the, in, the, in the departments relatively close to me, so within the same domain, it's also easy to find those teams, if not for the sim simple reason that they are physically really close by, one floor up, one floor down. If you go further away, then also physically you go further away. Uh, so, so it's much harder to get, get teams on board. So what's happening is that we see that uh, some teams within the bank, within, across the various domains, they do pick it up. They, they learn about this. They want to do this. And they are very active. And then around them, some other teams also pick it up. But we don't see the explosion yet that the whole of the bank is suddenly using, using PCF. So that's, that's, the, that's the biggest challenge we actually have. It's not the technology. It's how to get the whole organization on, on the platform, where it applies, of course. It, it won't make sense everywhere, but in a lot of places it does. So what do we do? We um, have a lot of, uh, of training. 
Uh, we, we provide a lot of documentation. So the teams that started out first, they really put a lot of effort in writing down everything they did, all the decisions they made, all the reasons they made the decisions. Um, so we, we were very opinionated on that. We were basically saying, do this, don't do that. And, um, uh, and, and why? And that, that just helps already. So we have an internal wiki where everything that we do, all the things that we do, are, are described. Uh, we provide workshops for other teams. Actually, the, one of the teams has a, an every Thursday an open day where teams from all over the bank can just come in and ask questions on how do you do PCF, how do you do cloud, and what, what are the issues there. Uh, we provide demos, we, we give events. Uh, so we, we have external, internal speakers in where we try to uh, tell all the, the, the developer community within Rabobank all the things that we do. Uh, and we have uh, Pivotal do dojos with us. So for the teams that are really uh, need to learn the real agile and uh, the whole labs way of working, uh, we have Pivotal uh, to help us do dojos. But apparently this is still not enough. So this is all, roughly where we are today. And we, are, and we do all those things and still the adoption rate within the rest of the bank is, 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 is hard. Right? It's also actually what I find uh, the, the most enjoying. So it took two years to put PCF in place, uh, but at, at the same time, when you see all the teams then actually starting to use it, that's really gratifying. That's really, it's really nice to see. Um, so where we are today, uh, I recently learned that I was lying on this slide, but I just keep on lying anyway, so it's okay. Uh, we have uh, uh, over 100 teams already on the platform, and we went live in uh, January 1st, so that was when the real production-ready uh, foundations were there. Uh, in Azure on, on public cloud. Um, uh, then we started building our, uh, building our apps in there. We have over about 100 different applications in production today. Uh, and when you combine it with all the instances and, and dev test and prod, then we, we go towards uh, 900 plus. Uh, and that's a lie. It's a bit, it's a bit lower, actually. So that's, that's where the lie is. Um, so it's actually uh, growing nice, nicely. Uh, we see this linear growth. Actually, not this month. That's why I, I left out September. Uh, if I would have added in there, it would be mostly flat. Uh, I blame that on the vacation holidays. I don't know. So we, we, we really need to, uh, we need to step it up again. Um, and of course, I should say that we are uh, hiring, right? That's uh, obvious. <laughs> a lot of Dutch people in here. So if you want to really, really do nice stuff, even, if it, even though it's a bank, right? It's boring uh, financial stuff. Uh, we are looking for developers and, and ops teams uh, members. Yeah. Thing to add there is that our ops team, uh, which is also a thing that, that really makes, me, uh, uh, makes us really proud, is that we run our, the whole of the platform. So we have four foundations, two in production and two for dev, dev test. So actually, we have five. We have a crash and burn environment. That is all being managed by three people. And, and those three people do other stuff besides. So that, that's kind of awesome that we can simply grow the number of teams and we can grow the number of instances and it doesn't affect the size of the team that needs to manage the platform for the teams. So that's, that's, really, uh, that's really good. Um, that's actually it already. So I'm going fast. Questions then? Maybe that's better. Yes, a question. Yeah. So the question is, how do we move software from dev to production now with yeah. this? Or? Yeah. Well, of course, most of the teams already, uh, so we were doing Agile before, so, so we have a lot of Jenkins pipelines already in place. Uh, all of the things we already put into production on our old WebSphere environment was fully automated, all to, all, always with build pipelines. Uh, so basically, actually moving that over to pipelines that did CF push instead of all kinds of complex uh, web sphere deployments, is, uh, th that was basically it. So we didn't affect, we didn't change the way teams need to work. Uh, they still have their own choice of, of build pipelines to use, their own software, their own scripting. Uh, we do provide a, a generalized uh, build pipeline for them, which does a lot of other stuff as well uh, for them, but they, it's their choice to adopt it or not. They can also write it themselves. But basically, it's, it's not a big step for us because we were already doing it. Does that help? Kind of. So I take it it's, they've just they're using CF push from their pipeline straight into production. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, but of course we have, for example, we have SM9 in there for our change management, and yeah. we have in our on our build pipelines we have built in that we first create a ticket, and that somebody else first needs to approve it, otherwise the whole build pipeline won't follow along, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So we really try to automate the change process as it exists today, uh, fully automated as much as possible. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
built so much capability. Now that you've built so much capability with Cloud Foundry yourselves, what's your thoughts around PCF versus open source? Well, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> Maybe we should down the camera right now. Now, yesterday we had a, we had, I was uh, at a, as a nice presentation about moving towards the open source from the commercial. And I think it was a nice inspirational session. But for us, we are very still at the start of our journey using PCF. We, were, we will never be able to just pick it up, pick all the open source components, build it ourselves, and start working it. It's way too complex. CF is, is, is a complex uh, environment. So for now, it's really good for us that we have a, a commercial offering that we can just install and get all the build packs and, and the upgrades from. And maybe in a few years, I don't know. But I think for now, we're, we're on the right track. Yeah. So I think I would, I would advise, yeah, it's, of course, that was in the session yesterday. It's about the appetite, the risk appetite of the company. I think our risk appetite is not such that we would start with the open source stack. Uh, I think it's, uh, it wouldn't work for us. But well, that's, that's my feeling. Yeah. Other questions? Oh. I have five minutes left, so we can do all kinds of stuff. Sing songs. <laughs> <laughs> not me, but <laughs> I, I did promise it, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I won't, I won't. <laughs> so no more questions then? Yeah, sure. There's a mic coming. So you have all the time in the world, so just. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, I was, I was going to ask if you have some examples of some of the apps that are running on the platform today. You mentioned that your, your group, which started it, was kind of in the online side. Yeah. Just any examples to share there? Would be yeah, I'm not sure. I'm actually not sure whether I can, uh, not, not that I'm not allowed to share them, just that I simply don't know them. So in, in my role, we have all the teams working on stuff. They're going through their own phases, and I actually don't know what they're working on on a daily uh, basis. <laughs> Uh, sounds scary, right? But yeah, I, I just fake as if I do all the time. Uh, no, but parts of our app are already uh, already online, and I, I think it's a part of the payment request feature that we have. It's like uh, in, the, in the Netherlands, you have Tiki, yeah, Tiki. Uh, the Dutch guys know that. Where instead of making a payment to somebody else, you can be sent uh, a link to make that payment. So instead of me paying you, you would send me a link where I can easily pay you. So it's like a pre-filled uh, uh, payment. It's highly successful in the Netherlands. <clears throat> and we have also, we've also been offering our own version of that, of that, and, for, and that already runs on, on PCF, for example. So just parts and fragments of our uh, mobile app and our website slowly start moving over. And I, I really don't know where we are exactly. What I do know, <coughs> sorry, is I mentioned that we have over 400 applications on our old platform, and the number of applications that has actually migrated is zero. So we have over 100 applications running, but nothing has been really migrated yet because teams really pick it up to do the new features. Of course, that's what the business wants, right? All the new features. And then um, we think that's, a, that's okay. Uh, we, we also put an end of life date on the old platform. And that way we try to, to, to first do the fancy stuff, the new features in the new way. And then when you work on that, and you also need to maintain that stuff on that old, boring, dusty platform, you, you, take, the, you take the effort and also move it over. That, that's a bit of a strategy we hope to, uh, we hope will work. <laughs> but we're not sure yet. Let's see. Yeah. Yes, one, one question. Um, was it difficult to fulfill the PCI standards in this environment? Yes. So I, I told you about the year. That's all about that. So that's all about, and then that's not especially, I think, PCF. If you would have done PCF or another Cloud Foundry instance in our own on premise data centers, it, would have, it wouldn't have been that hard, but the fact that we run it on public cloud makes it really, uh, really difficult. And don't, don't ask me about all the details. Uh, I've been involved in many, especially security uh, risk kind of discussions uh, that, that I was, but I don't know all the, all the technical details on that. But it took us a year to, to really get it in place. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure, maybe, yeah. yeah. Uh, we have I, I have minutes. one question also. Um, have you evaluated the, the, the effort to, to migrate the 400 uh, applications from your WebSphere uh, sorry, existing I, I, platform? Maybe you can mic use oh, the yeah, mic. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Have you evaluated, evaluated the effort to migrate the, the 400 applications you, you have on the WebSphere platform to the, the CF uh, environment? What's the question? Is that, do I think that's feasible? Or? Evaluate the, 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 the effort to migrate. Oh, the effort, yeah. Yeah, no, we didn't. No. And I don't think we need to. So, um, uh, actually, the same question yesterday. Um, uh, somebody asked me that too. So, of course, we have a rough estimation and we, we have a rough feeling. And we know that basically all of our Java apps on the old online platform, they are spring-based. 
So uh, depending on the complexity, it's, it's either very simple to put that in a Spring Boot app or not. So for example, if you use MQ, it's going to be a bit more difficult than if you do HTTP-based uh, uh, service calls. Uh, but we didn't do that really thorough estimation. Basically what we said, we need to move anyway. Our platform is growing old. We need to replace it. And we put that end of life date on our old platform with, uh, to, to push everybody into the new platform. Um, but if, if needed, we can move the, uh, of course we can move the date. We, we can simply say we'll keep it in place for another year, but that's, that will bring a, a lot of cost with it. So we're basically looking at that model and not so much on, on the individual effort needed. Uh, again, we think that if teams start building their features from scratch using Spring Boot and putting them on, uh, on, on the platform, then at some point picking up your old features, uh, taking the effort to move it over to the new platform is better than always switching off that, oh no, I don't need to do the CF push anymore, I don't do Spring Boot anymore, now I do all that WebSphere stuff that I really don't remember how it all works. So actually, I think that uh, the mental effort uh, is going to help us uh, force, the, force the migration. Yeah. Okay, I think that's time. I think we're over time. Just one, one more then. One short one, sorry. You said you're managing the whole, uh, all of your cloud foundries with a team of three people. I was wondering, what, what's the task of these three people? Uh, what, 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 what's the scope? Well, of automate uh, a lot of it. One of the people is actually sitting in the back very relaxed, so that's also a good sign, right? Just three people and they still have time to do uh, nothing. <laughs> 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 I'm kidding, I'm kidding. No, so uh, <laughs> so that the, it's mostly about it's a lot about uh, automating lots. So they have a lot of concourse pipelines where they apply patches. It's about uh, offering means to create new orgs and spaces quickly and stuff like that. But, oh, but it doesn't include the twenty four seven operation of the of the of the platform. Yeah, that, but of course, uh, since, since we, the platform is that is that highly stable, yeah, okay. it's not a lot of work. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Fine.